Okay, I wanted to talk about direct threading as implemented in Transforth, which is a fourth that uh, I'm building incrementally in a series of blog posts. So here's the blog address. You should follow along there. This video might not make sense by itself. It's meant to go along with the blog. Here is a Byte magazine cover from uh, 30 plus years ago, August 1980. This is kind of the heyday of the fourth era. And I think this cover illustrates pretty nicely what I'm about to talk about, which is uh, threading. So we have word definitions. And of course, people who know fourth already know these things, but we have word definitions packed in memory as just addresses of other word definitions. So we have double here defined as a pointer off to dupe, which then comes back and goes off to a pointer off to plus which then comes back and does uh, do semi and returns. So double is defined as duplicate, plus, and return. And so you can push a number to the stack, duplicate it, add the two together, and that's the same as, as doubling. And that's exactly what we're going to do here in Transforth as part of the demo. So first of all, for the demo, I want to assume that uh, dupe is not a primitive, because I want to actually demonstrate what happens when secondary words call into other secondary words in return. So we're going to redefine dupe to be zero pick. So pick normally takes the nth item off the stack and makes a copy of it to the top. So zero pick is the same as dupe, really. So we're going to redefine it. And then we can define double just exactly the same way as the, uh, the cover art there, as just dupe plus. And now that we have those in the dictionary, we can push a 42 on the stack and double that. And print it. And there you go. So let's take a look at what's happening inside the machine as we do this. We want to see how this stuff is being packed into memory and then how it's being executed by the inner interpreter. So first of all, let's look at some of the primitives that are already in memory. So our dictionary starts at 0400 hex, 1024 decimal. And do semi is the first primitive that's in the dictionary. And this is meant to execute on a uh, virtual machine that's made to run forth. And it happens that the that 2 is the opcode for do semi. So that's put in memory. Do lit is made for uh, taking literals out of the dictionary and pushing them on the stack, and we'll see that. Its opcode is three, and it's followed by a next. So actually, primitive words can be sequences of opcodes. They're always terminated by a next. Here, most of our primitives are just single byte, you know, or single uh, bytecode instructions followed by a next, but it could be in number of bytecode instructions followed by a next. Pick is one of the other things that we assumed is a primitive in the machine. Opcode 37 followed by next. And add is the final primitive that we need for this demo. Uh, Opcode 25 again followed by next. So the thing to notice is that all of the primitives are just opcodes, okay? And uh, all of them are terminated by a next. The one exception is do semi, which is kind of special. And we'll see how that works. But now let's define this uh, dupe and then define double in terms of that and see what happens in the dictionary as we do it. So we type a colon and immediately we get do col appended to the dictionary. And so this portion is some other things in the dictionary for the outer interpreter and other primitives. Uh, but the beginning of the empty space happens to be 80D. And so our, our word gets appended there. So our secondary words begin with do col. And we'll define dupe. So that just gives it a name. So essentially there's somewhere else in memory that has mappings of names to addresses. And so this is just a pointer to that address. And we can define it as uh, zero pick, like we're going to. Zero ends up putting a do lit and the zero data itself in there. Now notice that what it put, puts in here for do lit is not the opcode for do lit, but it's a pointer to the address of the do lit primitive. And then same thing with pick. It ends up putting a pointer to the pick primitive. And then a semicolon, again, puts a pointer now to do semi. And we'll just quickly walk through doing uh, defining double as well. So double puts a new do, do call. And we define double, which just maps the name double, sorry, the name double to that address. Then uh, Double is going to be dupe plus. So dupe. Now here we have the address 
of this secondary that we just now defined. So all of these addresses, they can be addresses of primitives, they can be addresses of other secondaries, works fine. And plus now is the address of the add primitive. And semicolon again. So just to recap, kind of the, you know, all of the primitives are just pure opcodes. All of them are terminated by nexts. All of the secondaries, though, begin with do call and end with do semi. And in between, they're just addresses of other words, or addresses of other words here. One exception is this uh, do lit, which actually packs some data in there. And we'll see how do lit works. It kind of, you know, tricks the interpreter into skipping over that data. But in general, this is how it works. Uh, the first instruction, the first you know, byte of any secondary is always a do call instruction followed by a bunch of addresses. The last address, though, is the address of do semi always for secondaries. So now let's see how this works in the machine. Um, you know, first of all, we can kind of see the byte magazine cover right here in our, in our dictionary. All of the threading going on, double is defined as dupe, which goes off and does a do lit, goes off into the primitive and does that, pushes that on the stack, and pick uses that um, to duplicate the things on the stack and add, adds those two together, and actually it returns through next to do something and comes out. Now to see how this is going to work in the machine, this is going to be a little bit tedious, but hopefully you can follow along. As I, I hope this video is easier to understand than maybe doing a bunch of state transitions in a table or something in my blog post. Hopefully you can follow along as kind of a dynamic thing here, but it gets a little tedious. Uh, so we'll show the stack down in the lower left here. This is going to be our data stack. We can push values to that. So we can push the 42 onto there. And then type in double. And now we're in interactive mode, not compiling mode. So this isn't going to add anything to the dictionary. This is going to look up the address of the double word, which is this guy, and uh, execute it. So here we get to see kind of the, the guts. And it looks a little, you know, messy here, but Honestly, this is the entire guts of a fourth inner interpreter. Just two stacks, a map, which is the dictionary, and these three these uh, three registers. So the P register is sort of like the program counter reg register in a normal machine. This is pointing at the next instruction that the, the VM is going to execute. The uh, W register is sometimes called the working register or the word register. It generally points at the word that we're in the middle of executing right now, the word that we're about to jump into or the word that we're currently processing. I is the interpreter register and it always points at uh, the thing that we just left, the thing that we're going to go to next, sorry. So at the moment you can assume that we were just typing in you know 42 double in the outer interpreter and it just jumped in to execute double and so this address here is somewhere in between um, and it's somewhere in the outer interpreter. And so what this means is once we're done processing double, jump back into the outer interpreter and continue taking you know, input from the keyboard. Well, we're not going to actually show that code. We're just going to jump out and back in. But it sets up all these pointers and then uh, executes the instruction that's being pointed to, which is do call. So we do a do call. So there's three basic primitives in an outer inter or an inner interpreter. There's do call, which his job in life is to enter new word definitions. There's next, whose job is to step along executing the addresses in a, in a thread for a given word. And then there's do semi, which is essentially a semicolon, uh, to jump back out of a word definition. Those are the three you need to remember. Uh, next is probably the most important thing of all. It's executed the most frequently. Uh, do call itself calls next, and do semi calls next. Next is used all over the place. That's the one that needs to be extremely fast. In our case, this is a VM, and all of these are actually just single instructions implemented as fast as possible. So do call, what he needs to do is he's about to jump into a new word, so he needs to save off the interpreter register so that once we're done executing that word, we know where to come back to. So he's going to take the, the 555 and push it onto the return stack. Then it's going to increment it, so now it's pointing at the next thing. So now we we're just are at double, we just jump into double. Um, the next thing that it's going to do is dupe. So now I is pointing at dupe. And uh, then he does a next. And next basically uh, points the working register at whatever I is pointing at. So I is pointing at 80D, which is here, which happens to be the dupe. So we, you know, we just executed double. We're about to do a dupe. 
and uh, increments i now. So now i points to, yet again, the next thing. And we jump into it. And it happens that this was a secondary, so the instruction it's about to execute is the do call to jump into uh, doing dupe. So again, he saves off the address. So I was pointing at add, you know, so we just executed double, double just executed dupe, jumped into dupe, but he had to remember that when I come back from dupe, I need to do add. You know, so dupe is going to walk along doing lit, do pick, do semi, and then return to add. So this address needs to be saved on the return stack. So he does it. And then now he can reuse i to walk the, the list of things inside of dupe. And do a next. Next just, uh, you know, indexes through i to 401. Do lit. Increment i. And jump in. Now do lit is going to take whatever i is pointing at, which is our zero, and push it on the stack. So it pushes that on the stack. And then the little trick is he increments i here. Do lit itself increments i. So now that sort of skips over the zero. So zero isn't the next thing that will be executed by the inner interpreter. Instead, it'll skip ahead to pick. And then now the program counter just advances and happens to be pointing at next. So we do a next, which again is going to just take whatever i is pointing out, which is the pick. It's going to do pick next, increment i, and jump in. And now pick is going to take the, the zero off the stack as its argument and use that as the nth element in the in the stack. So it gets the n, which is zero, gets the nth element, which happens to be at the top of the stack anyway, and pushes it to the top. So that's how we implemented dupe. You can see that just worked. Program counter is incremented and is now pointing at next. So it doesn't do next. Which I was pointing at the do semi. So it jumps out. So now just to kind of recap what we're doing here, you know, we defined double, jumped into double. That was defined as doing dupe. So it jumped up to dupe after pushing the plus onto the return stack. That did a do lit, that did a pick, and now we're about to do a do semi, which is gonna jump back to the plus. So that's what do semi's job is. Uh, next is going to, to jump into do semi. So do semi's job is to recover the address off the return stack and return to wherever we came from. So that's what he does. He takes the 814 and he points i back there. So now i is correct. It's pointing at the add. And then it just does it next. And next, of course, is going to index through that and increment i and jump to it and do an add. And add does, of course, what you would think. You know, pops two things off the stack, the two 42s, and then pushes back the sum of them. So now we have a 42 on the stack, and this is the result we wanted, of course. P continues and does a next, falls through, which is the do semi, the final do semi of the whole process, which is going to uh, pop the 555 off the stack, which is our outer interpreter, which we're not showing, but it's going to jump back out to the outer interpreter. Does a next, and now we're back at the outer interpreter. So that's all the, the process that was involved. Now, I probably went a little bit too fast. I'm trying to stay under the 15-minute limit for YouTube. Uh, you can always play this again, though, and, and walk through it again if you'd like. So now that we have our 84 on the stack, we're free to uh, print that out, and that's our result. So hopefully that was kind of useful. Yet again, uh, I'll give you my, my blog URL. You should go there and check it out. This is where we're developing this transforth system incrementally, and you can see it from the ground up. Uh, the latest post actually is this, this implementation of the, the direct threading. Another good uh, blog that talks about threading in general is Brad Rodriguez's Moving Forth. Uh, he talks about other threading mechanisms. You know, So this was a demonstration of direct threading where essentially the first memory cell of each word address is machine code and can just be executed directly. It seems to me that direct threading is kind of the modern fourth way of doing things. Indirect threading is sort of the traditional way, and on some older machines it may be more compact, and that was kind of the reason is the memory constraints. So I hope this was useful. Go visit the blog.